Duray, welcome. How are you doing today? Hey, yeah, really well, thank you. Uh, I recently took some time off. Uh, so today's actually my first working day of the week, oh. uh, of the year as well. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling good and uh, what a pleasure to, to be on this podcast with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So yeah, you have to a you, to really you. interesting profile. I see you um, come from, uh, you have a sports background and somehow got into SEO. I'd love to hear the story of how that came about. Yeah, I think sports and uh, SEO have a similar, have quite a, like a lot of similarities, right? Um, besides for when I'm sweating on the sports field versus when I'm sweating <laughs> on the SERPs, it's, uh, it's both a, a discipline and an, an, an activity that where competitiveness is, is really highly valued, um, especially the, the numerous SEOs we have here working at, at DG. Uh, they are so competitive. In fact, our CEO describes SEO as a daily competitive game against your competitors. Mm. Um, and sport is similar, right? Like sport, uh, sport provided a fantastic ground for me to see um, equality uh, on the rugby field, whether it's you versus your opposition number. Uh, you're full on uh, at the on the rugby field, but then afterwards you're just shaking hands and you're you're, you're gentlemen off it. Um, and yeah, my, my um, sport career started in what is arguably not really a sport, but uh, who knows what is the true description, maybe a game is probably the best. I was a high level chess player uh, in South Africa, ah. uh, where I'm originally from. Um, and uh, that's kind of the extent of my kind of professional sporting career, if you will. Uh, but I played at a, at a very high standard there. Uh, always loved sports, uh, did a degree in sports science, um, have uh, many hours of physio uh, training and work shadowing and everything else that came with it. Mm -hmm. But actually, I, I went to university later than most, um, and I got into sport by uh, kind of going against what, uh, what my dad thought was the right thing. I don't know about you, Austin, but like... Um, Allow me to make the decision, right? If you tell me what I should do, I'm like, uh, no. But like, uh, so my dad was like, you, you're a businessman. I can tell like the way that you, I was selling supplements at my sports school in South Africa. I went to a high uh, top tier sports school in South Africa. I was like, you know, some people sold sweets. Mm. I sold like gym supplements outside right. the gym because everyone's trying to look big to get on the first team rugby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and actually see our police, the, first team uh or the, the captain of the south african rugby uh team like he used to like buy some sports supplements from me um <laughs> at, at the school uh and then once the rector found out i was quickly uh, quickly stopped from that <laughs> but um yeah i think uh, i was going actually into kind of rehab and like wanting to uh my, my dream at one stage was to be like the head physio for arsenal football club mm. um and Upon realizing that actually maybe this doesn't have the legs and the scalability that maybe I wanted, um, I was invited to to join Viaduct Generation, and, and the idea of Viaduct Generation was born out of uh, our current CEO and two other uh, business partners at the time, and they asked me to to join on board. And yeah, two and a half years later, I think it is now, <laughs> uh, we we're still going pretty strong. We've got a team of fifteen now uh, and offices in in Elgate East, and yeah, a bunch of very happy clients. Awesome, awesome. So, Viaduct, um, you guys are an independent um, agency, SEO special, specialist agency. What would you say yeah. separates you guys from, um, let's say, the big conglomerate um, agencies out there? Um, a couple of things. One, we've got that human touch, as almost all small agencies do, or smaller agencies do, in that, like, uh, you are not client number four, three, five. You are <laughs> a very important client where right. I have multiple relationships with multiple stakeholders in the business. And I'm not, yes, I'm interested in keyword position change. And that's a lot what my CEO will be focusing on and, and the other SEOs in the business. But for me, it's also about looking at, okay, like how many inquiries did you have last quarter mm. versus this quarter? What is actually moving the needle for the business? I think that that human element works really well. Uh, we have a rule we don't accept any more than 25 clients so uh, we never work with anything more than 25 clients because we find that within the seo industry 
quite often you might deal with someone like myself or someone like Fabio and you might go, yeah, buy that generation of the agency for me. And then you sign on the dotted line and they go, hey, have you met Josh? He's mm. your account manager and he's done SEO for about six and a half weeks and you'll be speaking to him nine to five. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, that's not really why I joined. I joined because of you guys. Um, so we try to keep that limit to ensure that we are working with high quality clients and nurturing them, making them a lot more money and then them going, great, you're making us more money. We'll put more effort and resource into you. Uh, so that human touch, I think, is really important. Um, but secondly, we're, we're execution led. So the general SEO model is, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, let's do an audit of your website. Let's assess the things that are wrong. And then we'll hold your developer's hand and we'll hold your internal content writer's hand to identify uh, content clusters and themes and trends. And we'll kind of guide you guys to do the right things to tick off the many things on this list. Mm-hmm. We do the audit as, as any good proper SEO should probably start with. And then we go, okay, what do you want to do? And what do you want us to do? Because hmm. we have a, a talented team of writers in-house. We have a talented team of developers in-house. So we can actually take control of the website and almost act as a kind of a hybrid between web dev and SEO. We aren't really the agency that's like, oh, can you make this button pop? We're a bit like, Ugh, yeah, okay, if you really want us to. We're not really CRO focused um, yet. Maybe one day down the line, like that's certainly something that we'd like to do. But I think the two things that separate us is that the human element that we really, we really care for our clients. And two is uh, that we are execution led. Hmm, interesting. So, okay. So let's say I'm an, I'm an SEO in-house uh, or client side mm-hmm. or brand side rather. I'm looking for an agency to support me with SEO. I'm currently the only in SEO um, brand side. What you, say, what you just said sounds really good. I've been across a number of the bigger or the so-called conglomerate agencies and you can, mm-hmm. just, you can just tell that they're all about the sales, right? They just, they just want to get mm. some of my budget and I'm quite protective mm. of my budget. I want an agency that can help me achieve results, right? What mm. offering do you would you say that you guys have in terms of helping me, a client, achieve the result for my stakeholders, for my the, the people that I report to? Yeah, I think um, as you mentioned, there are a lot of conglomerate agencies are so keen to win the sale without knowing what's going to keep the sale. Um, so I think making, make, making sure that like understanding exactly, Hey, Austin, what are the real true goals, uh, for you? What, what is it that you really want to accomplish? And then we, we might even say, Hey, we hold up our hands here. We don't think that your budget aligns with your goals and we, we, we we're not willing to take this on. Um, we really clear with our clients in terms of expectations and making sure that, um, they are aligned with budget and, uh, and making sure that we're on the same page. Um, and I think, yeah, making sure that you're speaking the customer's language and the customer's KPIs um, so that you're not going, oh, yeah, we've got more SEO visibility or more keywords in positions four to ten. Mm-hmm. Clients like, okay, man, I, I want non-branded keywords ranking in position one to three. That's what yeah, right. I get measured on. Yeah. Um, so I think that's probably first and foremost is really understanding one, what is the customer truly want? Is it feasible? And then three, uh, sitting down to make sure that uh, everything is well aligned. Because as I said, that we're, we're not uh, CRO specialists, mm-hmm. but we can drive me and you as, as you brand SEO and I'm a client or agency SEO, we can work together and we can increase traffic to a case study page where people (laughs) download and you get a nice MQL KPI. Mm. Is that what they want or do they want demos? Do they want inquiries in their diary? Mm. Um, So it's really about making sure that you understand the customer's KPIs, making sure they're realistic and then uh, targeting yourself on them, not just sending them screenshots of SEO technologies and going, thanks, cheers, bye. (laughs) You mentioned earlier, a word that really pricked my ear, execution. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, it pricked my ear because I have, 
very aware that agencies, some agencies, I should say, have this habit of creating a strategy as beautiful as it may be, um, or even an audit, let's say a technical audit, sending it over to um, myself, the client, and then that is pretty much where they um, finish their work. I'm having troubles having, let's say, a tech audit implemented. And as I mm. mentioned earlier, I'm the only person in-house, um, client-side. How do I go about actually, how can you guys support me in having this brilliant tech audit implemented by mm. the dev department who so far are pushing back heavily on implementing the recommendations that you guys provide? Yeah, the relationship between web devs and SEOs, eh? Hey? <laughs> goes goes far back. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is always a struggle, right? Um, there's always that 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 beef has been there for a while, yeah. um, but it's a shame that it's there because ultimately we're we're both doing the same thing. We both want to see better results from the website. Um, I think from an agency side as to how we can support you with that is by making sure that we are uh, really not even not even seen as an extension of your team. I'm happy to get your app domain email. Like I want to be part of that team. I want I want to swap merch with you. Mm. I want to be fully integrated into your team. I want to be invited to your Christmas night out. Um, and so you, yes, we act as a kind of a critical extension of your team. And I mean that precisely, I use my language purposefully there in that we are a critical extension of your team. I'm not here to tell you that you're looking refreshed and beautiful after the new year, but I am here to tell you that, hey, what's happening with the, that, that audit, that, that technical audit that we put together, I can see that uh, only two out of the 12 things that we identified have been activated on. And it's, it's one thing to sell someone something and then go, yeah, cheers, see you later, bye-bye. I paid my invoice, great, thank you, I'm out. And that's such a transactional way of looking at a, what is a long, what everyone can agree on is a long-term relationship within SEO. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's about really integrating yourself into the client, making sure that they value and, and appreciate um, your input by being that critical extension and actually challenging them because that's why they're paying us. They're paying us to be that critical extension, not to just tell them that they're doing a great job and oh, whenever you can dev team and they're busy, right? Dev mm -hmm. teams aren't sitting there. Uh, they've got so many things. They've got front end stuff. They've got a high list of user tickets that they need to deal with. And now the SEO, Guy has just added 12 more really resource heavy uh, tasks. It's not like, uh, it's not a, a, simple, a simple thing to do for sure. So I think the key thing is making sure that one, uh, getting involved with the client and, and making sure that you feel really entrenched and really part of that team. But then two, also about ensuring and saying, hey, if it ever does get too much and you need us to do that, we've got our in-house team. We're happy to take that on. But a lot, of, a lot of companies might not be comfortable with that, which is fair, fair enough, in which case we're happy to sit down with those dev teams, explain exactly what the benefits are for both parties, um, and yeah, hopefully being able to, to, to twist their arm and convince them that this is the right decision, um, or to uh, at least coming to a happy middle ground whereby both parties are uh, at least mildly satisfied. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because I've I've worked um, both client side and agency side and now as a consultant. And whenever mm. I've worked with uh, developers, there's always been a pushback. And I think it's usually because of, you know, they have developers have their, as you mentioned earlier, their work that they're carrying on with. And here comes SEO adding to their workload and in some cases actually distracting from their workload. So it's seen as mm. the word invasion of space comes to mind. That might be too strong of a word, but it seems as though SEO are um, being too um, forefront with their requests, with what they want. Mm. I mean, up until they actually, developers actually receive requests from SEOs, developers they might not even consider seo as a something that's even in their um um, <laughs> um, um roadmap at all so mm. there's always this battle of okay we had a roadmap 
developers, we had a road, roadmap, but now we need to change it for SEO. And there's this question of why. Why do we need to change everything that mm. we had planned just for SEO purposes? How, how would you suggest like an agency supports an in-house um, SEO person with that challenge? I guess my first question would be why hasn't time been allocated for that? So absolutely, like with anyone, right? My diaries, if you were to call me today and say, Dere, I want to be on, I want you on the podcast today and we're going to release it tomorrow. I'd be like, thank you. That's, that's, I appreciate the shout out and I appreciate the exposure, <laughs> but I've got stuff to do, man. But <laughs> right. you kindly mentioned, you did this, what, pre-Christmas? You got in touch and yeah. I was like, yeah, happy to, it. looks cool, aligns with what we're doing. Um, so I guess my first question is going to be like, well, why ha hasn't there been time allocated already for that? Why weren't you in that roadmap meeting? Um, SEO isn't something where like, okay, maybe a technical audit and you have six new things that you need to add onto the developer's task list. Okay, that might be a bit of a tough day and you might need to buy them lunch. But <laughs> um, my suggestion always is to try and get yourself entrenched early doors into that um, and making sure that that... SEOs shouldn't be thinking of themselves as like the overlords of devs. It should, hmm. That makes no sense, right? Like without devs, we, we can't really do what we do. And we can just make suggestions all day long. Mm -hmm. Devs are a critical and, a, and a absolutely a very, very important aspect of, of what we all do. So you need to get them alongside. Um, and I think the way to do that is just to justify the, the ends, um, making sure that like, yes, okay, this is more work, but this is why we're doing it. And this is the expected results of us doing that and really making it crystal clear to the developer and to the dev team that this is not just task for task sake, but asking them and getting them on side and getting their approval as to the importance of it. Maybe you have a tech list, 12 things, 10 things you've got to do, and you go to the dev, dev and you go, hey, I need to speak to you about how we can implement this within the roadmap. And say, instead of saying, I need to get this done, go, let's have a conversation about what you think is the most important thing for us as a business so that both of us can get a promotion and both of us can hit our <laughs> Um I think having that more kind of consultative and more like allow, like slowly, slowly approach mm -hmm. rather than authoritativeness and like, hey, Mr. Dev, Mr. Dev, we need to do this and we need to do it yesterday. That's the wrong approach and that's, that's not going to get uh, the relationship anywhere, in my opinion. Completely agree. I think a lot of SELs now are very much focusing on their soft skills. I mean, as SELs, we mm. we tend to historically we just focus on all the hard skills, um, algorithms, etc. All right, but nowadays we understand that sure. actually we need to be the ones leading that conversation with the different departments, developers, copywriters, if friggin' PR mm -hmm. um, um, PR department. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to be doing so in a, so we need to improve our soft skills in, in, in doing that. I find that there is a challenge, almost like a, a two tier challenge, one with the business mm. um, brand side and mm. looking at or trying to convince a business to invest in SEO in the first place, right? So having an SEO person in-house, it was a big, um, big buy-in from the business and then to then ask a business to support or to go with the idea of having an agency an seo agency supporting the seo in-house that's another challenge right and then the third challenge yeah. will be more on an operational level so speaking with the heads of the yes. different departments and trying to figure out the ways yes. of working it's a very interesting channel seo in that it's very new in digital mark in digital marketing. It's not the newest channel. So social, mm. of course, is newer than SEO. But SEO is that one channel that's very people still still see it as this mystical thing. And I think because of that, they find mm. trying to understand it uh, a big challenge that they would rather not be a part of. So and because of that, they tend not to be forefront with SEO. So I think it's down to SEOs to lead the different departments into a better ways of working that includes SEO. Because without doing that, SEO will probably be like a bottleneck as it is with a, a, a number of brands. Yeah, 
I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, soft skills, as you say, is so is so important these days. The ability to communicate internally, externally, to um, manage up and down is 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 super mm-hmm. important. Um, and to get buy in early, um, I think you're absolutely right. Like if I was a, a e-commerce business owner selling furniture, let's say, and I hired an SEO. And then that SEO came to me after three months and said, hey, you need to spend double my salary on an agency. <laughs> I'd be like, what the hell? Like, And then I need developers to do the work. And <laughs> wow, this sounds like a very expensive project, um, which is why I think it's, it's really up to agencies to be very transparent um, with their costings up front. So like mm-hmm. when we put in proposals, we go like there's points in there to be like, please note, we can do only so much, but we need buy-in uh, from your from from your different heads of department. So, before signing this, this please make sure that this is something that all parties are agreed to. That when I call the uh, head of content, that they go, ah, oh, fantastic, Deray, nice to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Let's set up a call later in the week and let's have a full-on conversation so we can identify the themes that we want to talk about in fourth. Not. Who are you again? SEO. <laughs> I don't, did we have an SEO agency? Like, that's not what <laughs> right, want, right, exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Making sure that the uh, the communication is is certainly a skill that all SEOs can get better at. Yeah, definitely. Do you find that um, brands tend to want um, agencies to be more agile with what they spend their time on? So, for example, let's say uh, technical audits, that's carried, let's say we have a a year retainers um, for SEO. Um, Technical audit carried out within three months. So that's a quarter already gone. And then for the next nine or so, nine months, it's a case of, okay, we need to spend time implementing it. But what is the agency going to spend the time working on? How do you go about um, Mm. navigating that, that terrain? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I think it really depends on how you package it up. I think as a general, as a general rule, agencies, the best agencies I know are those that are happy to, to be agile and to be there at the client's, uh, I'm not going to say beck and call because there certainly needs to be an area of, Hey man, like I'm doing that work for you, but like we can't go against what I've already done and stuff like mm. that. Um, but the beauty of working with at least a small agency is that they are lean, they are agile, they are able to adapt. Uh, it's also important that you ensure that like that is dependent on your industry. So let's take, for example, an industry that's changing really, really quickly. Let's talk crypto maybe, or like web three in general, that's mm-hmm. an industry that's <laughs> you, you produce a, a quarterly content strategy. By the end of that quarter, that crypto technology that you're talking about is no longer about. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> NFTs were the biggest thing in 2022, yeah. right? I don't know anyone who's been, I haven't heard NFTs on my Twitter in ages. I need to remove it from my bio quick. Um, so that industry is one where you have to be super agile. Maybe in other industries where uh, it's a bit more experienced and there's a bit more, um, uh, where it's not as fast paced. I'm sure everyone thinks they work in a fast pace industry, but like, especially in relation to, to say web three, maybe it's, it's, you can rely on a, on a quarterly content strategy. Um, so yeah, I think it's really dependent on, on the industry that you work in, but for us here at VG, what we do is we outline a monthly deliverables. So as I said earlier, we take a lot of the execution on board because a lot of the customers that reach out to us have like three people in marketing. Let's say, never mind one person in SEO, they have three people in marketing and, and half of one person's role is SEO and mm. AdWords, let's say. Yeah. So it's like when they bring us on board, they need us to write the blogs. They need us to implement the content strategy. They need us to identify themes and keyword research. They don't have a Moz account ready to go or anything like ready to, uh, to fall back on. Um, so often we are starting from the ground up. For us, we do, month, we do a monthly audit uh, where we in, go through technicals content, uh, backlink analysis, uh, and identify really what we think they need to do. And then we sit down and we go, how much would you, are you comfortable doing? How much would you like us to do? Oh, Deray, yeah. I've got loads to do. 
I've got to uh, release a new website and uh, help the app guys finalize the final uh, version of the app. Okay, so it sounds like we're going to have to do all the content. Can you help me a little bit with the tech? Have you got someone to implement or do we need to be changing the HTML on there? Um, no, Dere, you need to do it all. Fantastic, fine. Happy to get involved and get our hands dirty. And uh, we, we do monthly deliverables. So we say we'll write three blogs for you a month, five blogs for you a month, depending on the content velocity of their competitors and, and where they're at. Um, and then we have consultancy hours, which is kind of calls on us identifying what we, what we think we should be focusing on and what things are, are mostly important to us uh, and going through reporting with clients and uh, showcasing what we're going to be doing in the months to come, uh, kind of strategy development. And mm -hmm. then we have tech hours. So we mm -hmm. have 10 hours of tech. And at the start of the month, we kind of put a blueprint together in terms of, let's say you bought 10 hours of tech from us. Well, that month we'll say, cool. We think that the biggest uh, things that we need to execute on is reducing um, page load time. And within that, we're going to spend eight of these hours on optimizing images and we'll keep two hours in the bank. Mm -hmm. Then like towards the end of the month, we'll go, great. We've optimized all the images. We've got three hours left. We think we should do this. Happy with that, Mr. Customer, Mr. Customer? Yes, no, Dre, I'm cool, fine. Being agile and being um, open to the strategy changing, I think is important, but sticking to what you think is gonna make the biggest difference to the client, I think that's also important. So making sure that you, you've got a really clear agreement on what it is that you're gonna do, what it is that we're gonna do, and then being open to, to like, the thing's not quite going according to plan <laughs> and making sure that you have something in reserve uh, to support the clients. And you don't want to be that person that's like, oh, we ran over by 45 minutes. I'm going to be invoicing <laughs> you for... No, man. Like, like that's not great relationship, right? No. Um, and sometimes we do that. Sometimes a client's got like... Sometimes a client's got like uh, 15 hours of tech and we'll just do 23. But we'll say to them, hey... To do this, we think this is super important. We think that you're falling behind because of this. Mm. This is going to take what we estimate to be 23 hours. Uh, you've only got 15. Please note that next month, we are only going to be doing eight. Mm. Happy with that? Yes, no, cool. And just being really upfront and, and transparent, I think, is, is, is something that's helped that's, us that's, a lot. That's, that's the key word right there, transparent. It sounds like you guys are very transparent. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps towards the ways of working and being very... Um, yeah, transparent with, 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 with clients. Let's move on to um, mm -hmm. workshops and also workshops and uh, playbooks. Now, having recommendations is great, um, but nowadays mm -hmm. there is a huge need for departments, um, individuals, um, to understand why SEO is so important and why certain things should be ideally avoided. So for example, someone should not remove the XML sitemap from Google Search Console <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. uh, speaking with marketers um, who may not know everything there is to know about SEO, right? But they, they, they need to know uh, a certain amount of awareness um, to be uh, effective, mm. not just at their job, but also for the performance of organic. How do you go about yeah. um, supporting clients that need that, um, if you like, upskilling in-house? Mm. That is a fantastic question. And I think something we could even get better at. Um, I think in the future, what I'd like to do is, is to kind of create those workshops and create those kind of like round tables where we can get a number of clients together, whether they're clients or prospects, I don't think it really matters and just go out and teach on the subject. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have got plans to create a course here at Viaduct to do like SEO the right way. Um, like an SEO basics, SEO 101 course, something that is a little bit more entertaining than, uh, a lot of what is currently out there, I think is a lot quite, uh, at high frequency, maybe mm -hmm. create something that is a bit more tangible to to a copywriter, let's say. Um, currently, at the moment, I think uh, a lot of our resources and effort, especially in the marketing side, is is education focused. Um, so we go to a lot of workshops, uh, a lot of events, 
uh, we might kind of pitch on stage and, and pitch about the importance of SEO, uh, specifically in the black community. This is something that we work on quite a lot. I don't know how much research you've done into Viadoc generation mm -hmm. from that side, yeah. but the, one of the biggest things behind this, uh, me jumping on this podcast was your, your title in democratizing SEO. Mm -hmm. Uh, so our, our, our slogan, I guess is, uh, uh, democratize digital. Um, that's what we, we're looking to do, um, and really ensure that we pr provide a kind of a level playing field for those that aren't given the luxuries of SEO in the past. I think it's quite a, um, it's a specified, super challenging thing to, to fully comprehend There's so many ranking factors that yeah. are impacting the performance and then they're changing all the time. Yeah. Uh, it really is, it is a challenging game, right? But, uh, we take an education first approach, especially before customers join us. And then I guess the hours that we spend with them in the consultancy hours that we, that we, that they, that they purchase in their packages, um, allows for anyone in the team can utilize that. Whether that's the head of SEO, the head of marketing or a marketing executive mm. that's just joined the business and they go, Hey, can you teach them SEO for an hour? That's certainly something that we can do, but I think you're right. I think that there's uh, something that we can do to, to make that more scalable and to make it, uh, to allow other people uh, to really get that at, at scale. Yeah. I know a number of, um, brands now that, um, invest heavily within SEO and not just from a performance marketing point of view, but also from a um, educational point of view. So upskilling, upskilling um, internal uh, teams mm. and they see it as a huge investment, almost as a preventative approach to issues being caused for SEO for SEOs because <laughs> with SEO, you yeah. know, you do an audit and you find stuff that means the issue has already occurred, right? <laughs> so mm. it's essentially too late. And what I'm finding a lot of brands mm. are doing these days is looking at how they can prevent things from happening in the first place, which is why they're investing heavily in the educational side of things. Getting that balance between um, SEOs uh, being the ones who work on SEO and also helping mm. non-SEOs um, improve their awareness of SEO so they don't negatively impact SEO. <laughs> and I think it's a brilliant yeah. thing for brands to do. Um, I'm absolutely all for it. Um, a lot of brands now have um, um, a, a better awareness of SEO within the um, uh, business leadership. So as an as an industry, yeah. I think that's something that's a, that's a positive. And I, for one, I am going to continue to evangelize SEO every way that I, uh, that I can. And you're doing a great job on this podcast. Yeah. I'm sure this is reaching the Thank ears you. of many people who are learning, learning things. So it's great to, to see that you, you're actually doing what you say you are good on. Thank you. Um, I had in mind chat GPT, but I have it oh, from yes. a different angle <laughs> so let's move on to chat gpt <laughs> and yeah i want to take it from uh the point of view of um <clears throat> an seo working client side who's hired an agency mm -hmm. to support them with seo mm -hmm. and they're now concerned sure. that the agency will essentially sell them seo but use chat gp chat gpt to um for seo deliverables and okay. that is a real concern that i'm seeing starting to emerge from folks in-house so what would you say to a client who has concerns about that from a um, client's agency point of view we will sign something to say that we won't do it. <laughs> I, I guess like that's probably like the, like immediate way to like handle that objection it's yeah. like no eat is a thing right like what's enough e -E -A -T. like expertise man like authority yeah. trustworthiness we can't be just pumping stuff in there ultimately using ai i think is helpful especially if you're trying to significantly increase the content velocity of a site mm -hmm. um and you can certainly use it as a tool and utilize it as 
uh, helping to uh, to to support uh, the writer, but nothing will really replace that expert writer. So we have specific writers in specific niches. So mm -hmm. we've got an e-commerce writer, we've got a SaaS writer, we've got a we've got multiple different writers that specialize in those different different niches. So mm -hmm. you're not just getting someone random going. Oh, I have to learn about NFTs or learn about yeah. um, headphones today. Like we've got someone who's who's at least written and has a portfolio of, of writing for brands like this. So uh, I guess for me, it's about telling them that we won't. There's also multiple tools out there that actually can detect AI writing. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's one thing that we can always say, hey, we won't do it. And to prove it to you, please feel free to utilize these technologies to ensure that that, that doesn't happen. Um, there's many anti-plagiarism things. I think ultimately any agency that's just pumping through AI uh, and using that as like 95% of the content deliverables maybe is is shooting themselves in the foot because ultimately the client's not going to see the best benefit. You're not going to retain that client and they're going to... This is something that frustrates the hell out of me because we have to pick up the pieces, right? The yeah. good agencies out yeah. there have to pick up the pieces and go, hey, I promise we won't. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's what the last... The last agency told yeah. us and we're like well we we won't we're trying to actually work with brands and work with, with people who are trying to make a positive difference in this world and leave leave a legacy um i'm i hope vg is still going when i am no longer going i'm not trying to uh create and, and try and get an extra couple of thousands out of a client but rather i don't want to be the seo agency for six months i want to be the seo for six years 16 years because i'm results focused and results driven so if you're just trying to get a quick buck and make higher profit margins by hiring inexperienced staff, overutilizing on technologies and overutilizing on AI, then ultimately the client that's not following Google's guidelines, right? That's uh, ultimately mm -hmm. won't lead to the best long-term results. And that will lead to a poor relationship with you as client to agency side. And two, it'll lead to a poor relationship with that client in general with SEO. And that's a real shame because we've seen some amazing stories. We've helped some, some businesses dramatically. And, and that's what we're proud of. That's what the people at VG are excited about hearing that. Yes, the writer who's sitting there day to day pumping out content, it can be a bit frustrating. It can be a bit time consuming. It can feel a bit like, what is this all leading to? But when you get a Christmas card that says, you guys, you guys absolutely smashed it this year. Thank you so much for your hard work. Mm -hmm. it, it, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Please come up and meet my meet my team and meet us in the office. We'd love to we'd love to have a chat with all of you there. Like that's that's what you want. So yeah. I think uh, hopefully making sure that the client understands that you're in it for the long run mm -hmm. and you're not just here to to take their buck. And and that comes down to like really advising them in the right way. I think making sure that we're we're like value led here at VG in terms of like my sales strategy for getting people to join. Like as a list of a client is to like guilt trip them because I'm providing so much value that they should have paid for it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And if he's giving away this for free, what on earth would they give away paid? Mm -hmm. And yes, I might, I might lose a bit of time every now and then because I'm doing long video audits and over exa and explaining exactly what, what we think needs to be done and where they're falling short and where their competitors are. But ultimately, if they do sign, we have a we have a much longer retention rate than than a number of uh, agencies in our space, or mm -hmm. at least what I understand as kind of industry average. So um, yeah, it's working thus far. Um, yeah, as long as you maintain that long term mentality, I think it should be okay. I've answered your question in the most long winded. No, way, no, that's 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 that's, 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 that's yes, that's that was that was great. It actually led to another question I have in mind, which is around the um, uh, client's agency relationship. What can, mm -hmm. how can a, um, a client avoid an agency that will not be suitable for them? Um, either in terms of the right fit culturally or uh, performance wise, yeah. or whether they're just straight up sharks, salespeople that sell a service, but don't mm -hmm. focus on delivering the service. Oh, that's such a good question. Um, Let's, let's try and answer that. So it's culture, performance, and then like immediate red flags. Mm. Okay. So um, from a culture perspective, I guess it's important that you have a clear understanding of what you want from your agency. So if you are, 
spec savers or uh, speedy, like a massive company, and you are really looking to maintain that, uh, I want to say like hierarchical relationship, uh, and you want to make sure that you have an agency and you are super important to them, probably not good to go to another agency that has 12 of the biggest enterprise clients. <laughs> like maybe you do want to go with a smaller agency so that you can, when you ring, they answer. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, and another way of looking at it is if you're a startup business and it's you and 10 other people and you know you need SEO help and you don't even have an in-house SEO, then it's probably, again, not worth maybe going to the biggest agency in the world because you want to make sure that you are appreciated and that they understand you and you are not just 0.8% of their MRR, mm -hmm. but that they you grow as they grow. Um, so I think that's important. Uh, also identifying the values of, of the agency. Uh, there's a lot of agencies out there that are doing some great work. Um, Blue Array is doing a lot uh, within the SEO community. Go up, I think now I've, I've really transitioned into like focusing on greener businesses. Uh, right up here, we're focusing on, on supporting underrepresented founders and their allies on search. Um, so like making sure that you align with that is I think important. Mm -hmm. From a performance perspective, I guess I touched on it there earlier, making sure that they align with what it is that you truly want, uh, understanding if they're asking you the right questions, instead of just going, how many blogs do you want us to write to you? Maybe it's more important to be like, well, how many blogs do you think you should be writing for us? <laughs> and like, right. how, like identifying like, what is it that these blogs are actually going to lead to? As I said, are they going to lead to downloads of a white paper or are they going to, what do you want, Mr. Mm. Mr. Customer? What is the yeah. most important thing for you? Uh, making sure that you've got your goals identified and that they're asking the right questions. Um, I think in terms of uh, red flags, immediate red flags, I would look out for anyone who's willing to promise anything. Um, I know that seems like uh, every CEO's dream and an agency that is willing to put their kind of their money where their mouth is. I guess that's really... Uh, it must be a really cool thing for for a CEO, and I'm sorry I can't promise that. There's still Mrs. Future CEO that I speak to, <laughs> but um, unfortunately, we play the game that Google sets us. Google sets the rules, we play the game, and we've understood the handbook better than anyone. Me and you, we look through Google guidelines, we keep up to date with Google updates, we try our best to have a really thorough understanding of exactly what Google wants from us, and we uh, help you understand that and we, um, we help execute that for you. But ultimately, if Google tomorrow decides that, hey, alt tags, bad, alt tags are bad now for some <laughs> random reason, then we've got to go out and execute that quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, SEO agencies that are over-promising, I think it's also worthwhile to have a look on their LinkedIn. If I'm selling you SEO services and I'm saying, yeah, we can do digital PR for you, we can write content for you, and we can uh, take control of like technical execution and technical SEO, I, like we can do it for you. Just send me your logins <laughs> and you go onto my LinkedIn and you see I have three people in the company. It's not great. No. <laughs> um, I guess you can also, no, right? You can also see where um, your where you're getting, um, like where access is being requested from. I think a lot of, uh, no, I'm not, they are called agencies. But you will essentially deal with a UK based. If you're a UK business, more often than not, you want to deal with another UK business. Right. Uh, quite often, you might deal with the one person that's in the UK, and actually, they put all the work and execution offshore. Mm. Um, so again, like bearing that in mind, I think is important, and making sure that if you're comfortable with that, cool, that's absolutely fine. It'll probably be cheaper, but bear in mind that that might have a, a, a certainly might play a role in, in the quality of work you get back. Mm -hmm. um, looking at case studies is important. So when we when we kind of present our final proposals to people and, and we say, yeah, that's our price. That's what we think is going to make the biggest impact for you. We send through case studies, but we also send through like a list of clients and like their phone numbers. We've asked the clients, of course, if that's okay that we share them with them. But we go, mm -hmm. hey, don't like trust us or our five star Google reviews or our great reviews or wherever. But like, go speak to our clients. Get the real mm -hmm. understanding of of what it's like to work with us and. Yeah. Uh, I think those are some key things that, that clients can do to make sure that they're making the right decision. 
because you don't want to make the wrong one, right? It's so costly. Uh, yeah. to have to do it all over again to tarnish your position and your reputation. Oh, exactly. It, it's gross. And I, and then I understand to... why it takes approximately 100 days to make that decision. Yeah, I was about to say something like that and then have to go through all of that again with a new agency. And when you do that, it's then a case of you're on the back foot with the, with the agency. You don't quite trust them just yet. The agency has to prove themselves. Um, and that's, that's, that's yeah. a shame for the, for the industry as well. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's something that we deal with. I think probably every client, every, every client, client. <laughs> they've always been stuck in the past. I've never had someone be like, oh, I just fired my SEO agency, but they were brilliant. So hopefully you're as good as them. I love you guys. Really. Never, ever. We're always starting from the ground up. But yeah. yeah, with transparency, it helps. Now, with um, the sales process, um, let's touch on the sales mm. process real quick um, of SEO services. Sure. There is this um, ways of working, which I, as a let go back to me as a um, um, a client, understand. You know, an agency has to bring in business, which is perfectly fine. An agency has a sales team, and usually mm -hmm. the sales team is very different to um, the SEO team. Again, understood, mm -hmm. it's, it's a different skill sets. But I've noticed there is usually a gap between the sales process and the SEO uh, deliverables. It's almost as though they're two very isolated departments. What do you guys do at VG to um, either bridge that gap or ensure that gap isn't there in the first place? Um, so I think we're, we're in a bit of a luxury whereby I lead the sales team here at BG. Um, so I think this is, this is something I spoke about actually at, at a London SEO meetup is that you need to incentivize your salespeople in the right way. Um, I would suggest not incentivizing them for closing deals, but actually for incremental MRR increase, mm. um, so that they are actually interested in what's going to make the longest if a client upgrades, great. The salesperson still gets a little kickback from that mm -hmm. um, because then you, now you're selling something that's actually going to, to make a difference. It's also super important to make sure that your sales, your SEO sales team are SEOs. Maybe they're not great SEOs. Maybe they're, they're getting there, but they've done a course that they've read a few books that they um, have, have a good understanding of what it is because I think it's incredibly challenging to sell something that one, you don't understand or two, you don't <laughs> believe in. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's important. I think incentivizing your SEO, your salespeople is important. For us, it's helpful because I care about this business. I've risked loads for this. I've put like everything I've got into it. So I want to see it be successful. Mm -hmm. I'm not in it for an extra couple of thousand. I'm in it for the long-term relationships and, and the legacy that it will leave. Um, so I have a vested interest in making sure that clients are happy. One thing that is one of my goals this year is making sure that I'm better at the follow-up because Fabio, my CEO, is excellent. He's our head of SEO and our CEO, um, and he manages kind of the long-term clients, and he's the kind of account director. And then we have project managers, uh, and I will, before proposing uh, a set of deliverables, I will sit with both of them, and I'll say, do you agree that, one, this works for the client? And I'll say, well, why are we doing that? And I'll say, well, because their competitors are doing this, this, and that. I go, okay. Why are we doing this? Well, they don't actually have an in-house debt. Well, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then I will, um, so I get in-house like agreement from our team that this is going to make a difference to the client. And then I'll make sure that one, like we can actually facilitate that, that we have the, the capacity and the, the ability to really deliver that for the client. Yeah. Um, so I think we're in a bit of a luxury in that department. Uh, but for others that haven't maybe got that luxury where Maybe you are the CEO and you manage the SEO, but you have a team and you hire people to drive the sales. I think it's super important that you incentivize them the right way, that you train them up so that they can speak the customer language and not just sale chat. And that they have a long-term vested uh, interest in, in the success of not only the business that you're working for, but for your clients as well. Mm. So <clears throat> it's the start of the year. What are you looking mm. forward to? 
um, from a business point of view uh, for 2023? Good question. Um, I think for us, the key thing is to have better relationships with our clients. Um, that's kind of something that recently that we implemented at, list, at risk 25 clients is the max that we're going to have because we don't want the quality of work to drop um, and providing a better work environment for the team here at Vida. So we've, uh, as of this Friday, everyone has Friday afternoons off. So we do now a four and a half day working week. I am looking forward to the stresses and the challenges <laughs> of, of uh, getting over that. But uh, I think that that's going to, that helps out. We, we're maintaining pay and we're asking same pay, same productivity for 10% less of the time. So we're working out how we can work 10% more efficiently. And if that works, great. Let's see what we can do to bring that down to four days. Who knows? Um, but I think that's going to be a new interesting challenge. Uh, me and Fabio have agreed that that is for employees only. So Fabio and I will be spending <laughs> Friday afternoons together. But that's okay, right? Like it's, I think as, as, as an agency co-founders, I'm really actually looking forward to spending that one-on-one -on -one time with him and mm. making sure that we're... Uh, kind of sitting together and, and making sure like debriefing on the week. I think that that's going to be cool. Uh, we've got some ambitious sales targets. Uh, we do want to break the million pound turnover this year. Uh, that's something that we, we kind of really targeting on, uh, but we want to do that the right way. And we're not going to try and close every small client that we think we can maybe get a bit of cash out of, but really for the clients that are going to be with us for the next five, 10 years, uh, how can we associate ourselves to them? What can we do to bring them value? Um, and bring them on board. Um, and then with that, we've got a lot of exciting things going to Brighton SEO. We always try and make a big song and dance out of that. Uh, <laughs> I think Fabio is speaking alongside Andy Jarvis uh, and, and, um, and a few others. So I think it's uh, going to be a really cool, cool event. Uh, we always, we always come pretty, pretty squatty with that. Like we bring the whole team down. We don't just bring like Fabio and myself and bring the whole team. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to like uh, get together as a family, eat together and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to loads of those cool events. Um, but yeah, take it each day as it comes. Um, and yeah, together we'll get there. Awesome. Awesome. I have two more questions for you, Zuray. Um, Hit me. For, so if you were looking to hire an SEO, what are the um, mm. skill sets or um, qualities you will be um, um, looking out for? Let's say just the just the, um, um, the the main ones that come to mind right now. Mm. Um, I think having a really strong uh, critical analytical uh, mindset is incredibly important. That they are data driven. I don't really want to hear opinions. If I see a CV of an SEO and I don't have numbers in there, I'm, <laughs> I'm puzzled. Like you've got to be analytical and, and that way orientated, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a content SEO, maybe it's a bit different, but still, come on, I need to see the ranking changes. I need mm -hmm. to see that kind of stuff. So that analytical mindset I think is, is, is crucial. Um, secondly, it is, uh, depending on their role, if they're going to be customer facing, I need to have a really good, feeling about them and they need to be kind of instill trust in me because we're going to be asking customers to follow our guidance and mm -hmm. they're going to be asking customers to implement their suggestions. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think them that is dependent on what role, because as we've said, SEO is so vast and there's so many things to look at, but just the top of my head is probably like an analytical mindset and someone who's able to critically analyze data um, and to the ability to, to communicate and to instill trust uh within clients and the rest of the team is, is super important awesome brilliant thanks a lot Dure. where can people find you online yeah if anyone uh, wants to check us out we're at seo.viaductgen.com we also have the wise build bridges podcast and uh yeah viaduct generation loves linkedin so yeah find <laughs> us anywhere on linkedin as well awesome i'll be sure to have those links in the description Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I hope 2023 is a fantastic year for you. Please keep on doing what you're doing while you're democratizing uh, SEO. We're going to be diversifying digital. And uh, yeah, look forward to having you on the, the Wise for Bridges soon. Awesome. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks good a stuff. lot, Ray. Cheers. Stuff. Have a good day. Cheers. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye.